Well, hello, everybody, and welcome again to this OpenShift Commons briefing. We're really pleased today to have um, the folks from Cotabon with us um, to talk about their journey from the PAS and to OpenShift 3 um, on OpenStack. So there's lots of great information here. Some of you may have heard um, the main presenter, Christian Ronaldo, talked previously at Red Hat Summits about their journey to OpenShift 2. Um, and that was an awesome presentation. So we were really thrilled to have him back um, to do this talk and um, tell them how the journey has progressed. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give them about 30 minutes to talk about their experiences, their lessons learned, things that they want to see in the next generation of OpenShift. And then you can ask questions in the chat room. Everybody is needed except the speakers. Um, there are some folks from Portobon with us, so they may answer the questions in the chat for you. At the end of the presentation, um, we'll, any unanswered questions you'll ask um, out loud, and we may repeat a few of the questions you asked in chat because chat isn't saved in recording. So without further ado, Christian, I'll let you take it away and introduce your team, and um, let's get started. Hello, hello everybody. My name is Christian. Um, well, uh, the idea for this presentation presentation is to talk about um, how we have deployed uh, OpenShift uh, version 3 on uh, Red Hat OpenStack. Uh, so let's start. Well, uh, uh, who is in this, uh, in this presentation? Who is who? Well, my name is uh, uh, Christian. I am the past project manager. Uh, here with me is also Pablo Alonso Rodriguez. Uh, who is our uh, principal uh, PaaS engineer, and also Eduardo Dominguez uh, from Red Hat. He is our senior architect. So uh, let's go to the next uh, slide. Uh, I would like to, to, to talk about uh, what is uh, Pro1, well, uh, and what, what, what we, we do. Well, uh, Pro1 is a global company. We, uh, uh, we belong to the Santander Group. Produan is the IT uh, is an IT company for Produan uh, for Santander Group. So um, we are more or less uh, five thousand professionals around the world. Um, in this slide, we can see that uh, we are in Mexico, United States, Brazil, Argentina, Chile. Spain, Portugal, UK, uh, German, etc. So um, uh, 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 we are basically a, uh, basically a global company and, uh, and belong to the Santander Santander Group. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, in this slide, I would like to explain uh, what is our main objective uh, using using OpenShift. Well, we, we have to design, uh, deploy, and operate a multi-region private uh, pass uh, solution. This pass, uh, uh, we are using OpenShift uh, version 3. Also, we were using OpenShift version 2. Uh, but we migrated to version 3 because uh, uh, we love containers. Uh, we think that the container is is, uh, is a great technology. Um, that's the reason why we we are using OpenShift uh, version version three. Uh, uh, this uh, this uh, pass solution uh, uh, um, we use this pass solution uh, for uh, for a financial application. So, um, for our perspective, this uh, this uh, pass is really really critical because we are running uh, financial uh, applications. So for us, it's, it's a um, it's a big challenge uh, uh, in order to have a very stable uh, pass environment uh, for this kind of application. is a is a really big big challenge. So um, uh, why 
uh, this uh, service is multi region why because we have uh, uh, banks in United States, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, uh, Mexico, uh, Portugal. So we have right now uh, five five regions. Uh, OpenShift is currently deployed only in two regions in uh, uh, Spain, but um, uh, for the next month uh, we will have. Uh, uh, um, in the Mexico regions, we will have two, two uh, OpenShift uh, deployments in, in Mexico. Uh, our regions, uh, each region uh, has uh, three availability zones. We can see in this slide the different regions, and also we, we can see the, the availability zones. Okay. Well, in this slide, uh, the idea is that uh, I would like to talk about uh, our uh, OpenShift uh, architecture. So um, we we can see that we provide uh, uh, we have se several layers. Uh, uh, the, the first layer is a uh, uh, load balancing. Uh, we use uh, HA proxy uh, to balance uh, different kind of services. Uh, we have here the different uh, kind of services. We balance uh, console, uh, OpenShift console, uh, OpenShift uh, uh, API. Um, we balance uh, internet, internet uh, applications, uh, intranet applications. We balance uh, uh, S, S3 services, OK? So we, 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 we have deployed uh, the load balancer, load balancer in three and three regions. Um, uh, here we, we can see the availability zone one, availability zone two, and three. Uh, the three uh, availability zones are deployed on OpenStack. Uh, the, the version that we use is uh, Juno. Okay. The next uh, layer is uh, uh, OpenShift master. We have uh, three OpenShift master for each region. Uh, every uh, OpenShift master is deployed in, uh, in one availability zone. Um, also, in, in this, uh, in this uh, node, we have uh, the ATCD uh, service. Um, the next, uh, the next layer, we we have uh, uh, three uh, or more, or more, or more uh, nodes for OpenShift in infrastructure. We we, we use this uh, kind of uh, nodes for routers, uh, for uh, Hawkular, uh, and also we could use uh, this kind of node for uh, uh, OpenShift internal registry. Okay. Um, we uh, the next layer we can see the OpenShift service. We uh, basically are uh, OpenShift nodes. This uh, uh, this this node are deployed in three availability zones. Uh, we we uh, have uh, two group of nodes. Uh, one group is for produ production, and the other group of nodes is for non-production, non-production services. Okay, we have uh, uh, several nodes in each uh, region, and um, well, uh, we, uh, we 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 uh, we deploy new new nodes uh, every month. Okay. We ca because we are growing uh, uh, more or less uh, twenty percent uh, every every month. Well, also we have uh, for for, for uh, persistent storage, persistent volumes. We use Ceph. We have a, a Ceph cluster for our uh, uh, persistent service. Um, we use this persistent service for basically for um, uh, MySQL, Postgres, uh, Cassandra, um, 
and also uh, uh, we uh, we have uh, uh, activated the uh, Rados gateway for uh, offset store storage. Uh, in the uh, monitoring for monitoring uh, pass uh, infrastructure monitoring, we use uh, uh, Wiley uh, Introscope. Um, we have developed a very big uh, uh, monitoring solution. We uh, we monitor every uh, OpenShift component, uh, every uh, pass component that we have deployed in each region. Um, probably in another presentation, I would like to show our uh, uh, monitoring so solution. Um, for reporting, uh, we we have uh, we have uh, uh, cloud forms. Uh, uh, we, we deploy the the cloud form node, but at the at the moment we we are not using the cloud the cloud form solution for OpenShift. Uh, but the idea is to use uh, this service soon. Uh, for um, uh, for um, OpenShift um, uh, uh, login, uh, OpenShift infrastructure login, we are using uh, Elasticsearch uh, Hibana log stash solution. We use this uh, this. Uh, this uh, log management uh, cluster only for the uh, infrastructure uh, logs. We don't use this uh, cluster for application uh, logs. Also, we have a special node uh, called SAM host. Uh, through this uh, uh, host, we deploy the OpenShift cluster um Eduardo uh, uh, will talk about uh, how we deploy the infrastructure uh, open shift infrastructure using ansel and puppet um, so it's uh, it's a very interesting uh, topic um for uh, application moni monitoring we we have a special uh, cluster uh, uh, we use a, a CA Introscope, Wild Introscope, for application. We have three three nodes, uh, one node in each uh, availability zones, and also we uh, deploy uh, um, three um, Docker registry for uh, one for Europe, another for Mexico, and the last one for Brazil. And also, this uh, architecture has um, a special data lake, a big data uh, cluster. And this big data, we also we only store um, logs from uh, applications. Okay, so we we uh, we develop a special uh, console. Um, we are not using Kibana. We develop a console. Uh, that is integrated with the uh, with the uh, OpenShift security in order to um, uh, get the the logs from the different uh, projects. Okay, so uh, basically this is our uh, uh, architecture. is uh, is a very complex uh, solution um, uh, for uh, authentication. Uh, at the moment we are using LDAP. But uh, we are planning to migrate to OAuth 2, and uh, we uh, also uh, use external services from Red Hat, uh, uh, IDM, uh, DNS, LTP, proxy, uh, um, satellite uh, capsule. Okay. So in the next uh, in the next uh, presentation, uh, Pablo Alonso. Uh, um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, networking, STN uh, plus OpenStack. Okay, so Paolo. Thank Paolo. you very much. So we use, uh, as we may have already mentioned, 
uh, Red Hat, OpenStack, and uh, Nuash SDN. Uh, we deploy over on top of them. Uh, why uh, why do we use uh, an OpenStack infrastructure as a service? Uh, many of you may be very familiar with typical infrastructure as a service advantages, uh, easier VM management, and so on. There's nothing new to say about that, but uh, for, because of some special requirements of our applications at the moment, they should be in-house. So we be, this is one of the reasons, the reasons because of which we decided to have an in-house solution instead of uh, using a public cloud at the moment. Uh, why did we use Nuash SDN? Uh, for the, if you don't know, know about Nuash, it's an SDN uh, made by Alcatel. Uh, it's a very complex uh, and good SDN solution. SDN stands for Software Defined Network. If you know about OpenShift, you may already be also already very familiar with that because OpenShift has an SDN. We use it because it allows us a very easy network management, easier than in the traditional world, of course. Uh, we our networking environment is completely isolated, so we can decide what comes in, what goes out, and nothing else. And we have, and we can avoid many IP addressing problems. The, the biggest advantage, we can define very fine-grained traffic ACLs. It means firewall rules. We can say uh, from I, A to B, that there can be communications, are TC port, TCP ports, AD443, uh, and nothing more. Uh, and we can restrict in a very specific way which traffic is allowed and which traffic is not allowed, which is uh, some were known as micro segmentation. And, the la and last but not least, we also uh, use uh, leverage that Nuage allows interconnecting OpenStack projects in a very flexible way. And we use that for, to access some backends we need to do and with in a more secure way than just uh, going out and in again by our internet. So there, and there is also, this is a very good solution and we are happy with it using Nuash SDN at the infrastructure level. There are some aspects that can be improved in both OpenStack, SDN, excuse me, in both Nuash SDN and the OpenShift networking by using Nuash. I mean, as I have already said, OpenShift use has its own SDN. So if we deploy OpenShift on top of OpenStack and Nuash, we are deplo deploying one SDN on top of another SDN. This is not a good idea. On the uh, and another, and also there are some things in the OpenShift SDN that could be improved. Uh, it can allow some very basic networking configurations, while on the other hand, Nuash allows very complex configurations. Because of that, Nuash people are developing developing a Nuash plugin for OpenShift. I think there are some traces of that in OpenShift origin code, but I'm not sure. Uh, whatever. Uh, we have a, we have recently participated in a proof of concept of this plugin, which is in a very early development stage. Uh, we so, uh, I can, so we we have participated in that proof of concept, and we see also that what they have already developed. They uh, uh, they are of already offer very a bunch of interesting features like having one subnet per project. Uh, as you, if you are not familiar with uh, OpenShift SDN, it allocates a, a subnet per node, and 
and when you in about allows isolating pro, uh, networking um, projects in in means you can have network connections between project bots on project A but not from project A or project B but you can connect project C to project A and then connect bots and then bots from project A can talk with bots of project C but not with bots of project B but this is not is this is completely decoupled from subnets because subnets depend only on nodes. That can be something difficult to think about if you are if you come from the uh, traditional networking world. So they offer using one subnet per project, which is more logical and allows someone to do some advanced other advanced networking configurations. It also the most important feature I think I should have put it first uh, is that it allows all the most advanced uh, configuration allows to perform a very fine grained configuration at the OpenShift level as it already does at the OpenStack level. And one important feature we are very happy with is that it keeps OpenShift Enterprise experience by default. It means if you use OpenShift Plus Noir, users will see the same that if they were not using Noah, unless you want to configure something else. And of course, you will see something different, but not if you have taught nothing. We could provide them, provide them some feedback, uh, like uh, we were very interested, in, for example, in, uh, in, turning, in tuning the solution to allow users to have some service related to networking configuration uh, as we have as uh, one of the advantages of SDNs at the OpenStack level uh, is that you can you have self-service. No one from infrastructure has to, to touch much so that you can configure your networks. It will be interesting to have that kind of self-service that OpenShift users have that kind of self-service on their bots and so other and other minor aspects. They, of course, this is in a very early development stage. They are willing to develop a, a, another big bunch of new interesting features in the future, like, for example, a way to avoid the double open overlay. It means to have two SDNs when you deploy OpenShift on, uh, with Nuash on top of OpenStack with Noash. And so we look forward for news out of that because we found it very interesting. Now, uh, El, El, our uh, teammate Eduardo is going to talk about our automation and, our, and the steps we follow. Hi, everyone. This is Eduardo. Uh, I will try to be as fast as possible. And I would like to talk about or automatization that we have uh, been working on the past uh, few months. Okay, uh, as Pablo and Christian talk about the, the architecture, we, we run uh, OpenSeed version 3 on top of uh, OpenStack plus uh, the NUATS SDN. So we first started with the OpenSeed version 3.0, which we deployed using manual instance from Horizon. From Horizon. And we started uh, to think about what we will do. Okay, uh, this was a learning path. We faced a few issues, and we we uh, we we learn uh, from from the, from the way that, uh, on how to deploy OpenShift on the proper way. We need to tune a lot of things for our particular environment, and we faced some restrictions. Uh, speaking about networking and things that makes us. Uh, to customize a lot the, the OpenShift installation. For us, also, adding new nodes was uh, pretty crucial because uh, we started to grow pretty fast. We started with a few nodes, and then we suddenly faced that we were uh, low on, on nodes. But as we uh, customized a lot the, the nodes configuration and a lot of things, we couldn't run the Ansible installer with uh, adding some nodes. So we started to uh, working on heat templates and uh, the 
a pretty basic uh, script that will uh, complain all the prerequisites like the Docker installation and all our uh, customization. We call the script the common assets, assets and we started uh, to work in the automatization. But uh, the thing was that we don't, uh, we didn't have any configuration management. So there were uh, servers that were deployed with some configuration and uh, others that were uh, were created before that didn't have that configuration. We faced the the Snowflake server that we made uh, a lot of things uh, by hand. Like for example, the last one was expand the slash bar file system. And we want to automate new deployments. So we started to think about how do we automate these things. We thought about uh, having some golden OSP image that we will clone for every node, or maybe hit and cloud init scripts, or maybe PXC for deployment the base uh, instance. We also were talk, uh, thinking about configuration management with Ansible or Puppet. And also the package life, life cycle management with satellite or maybe Twitch cloud. And finally, the winners was uh, Ansible and uh, Puppet using satellite. So we started to to build uh, some Puppet modules like the ones that are in this slide for base stuff like base packages, DNS, NTP, a lot of things that are common for all the uh, instance in our in our uh, infrastructure. Also for things like manage uh, Docker configuration, for example, the, the Docker storage uh, plugin, the proxy configuration, uh, things like open files limits, uh, things like that. And also for the uh, OpenShift nodes and OpenShift masters. And we do all these uh, Puppet modules uh, thinking about uh, parameterization to be able to modify a lot of things with just a simple uh, parameter uh, modification. For that kind of things, we use uh, Hyera using a, a Git uh, repo backend. So we are able to track uh, modification on the parameters. And this Hyera and the Puppet modules are deployed in a capsule, which means that we use satellite to manage all our current configuration. And for Ansible, we created a few uh, playbooks. The first one was, was uh, just to deploy a basic instance, which means create the OpenStack instance, uh, given the instance a floating IP, the correct uh, volumes attachment, such and such. Uh, we have an internal DNS, uh, which Christian talked about before, and we need to register the instance in that DNS. Uh, register the instance also in satellite to to be able to apply all the modules. Apply the modules, run and zoom update to be on the same uh, content view in all the instance and reboot. So with with this uh, basic uh, uh, provision uh, playbook, we have uh, a proper base server and it will be customized later according to the role. We created also a, a custom playbook to add a new node to the uh, OpenShift uh, cluster, which means uh, the tasks that are on the slide, which, uh, like, for example, create the node certificates, copy the node certificates to, from the master to the node, uh, move the host to the proper satellite uh, host group, and run the, uh, Puppet which means that all the puppets, uh, all the puppet modules uh, attached on the OpenStack, uh, on the OpenShift node are run, all the Docker configuration, OpenShift, and these kind of things. We also set a proper uh, OpenShift labels. We set it as non-schedulable, uh, non and we pre-pull the Docker uh, images needed for our infrastructure. Finally, we reboot the, the node, and the node is ready for to be schedulable, and that's it. So for the current procedure of uh, installing a new region, we use the custom playbook to create all the uh, all the OpenStack instance, not not just the OpenShift ones, but also, for example, the monitoring ones. Uh, 
we install the uh, OpenShift using the default uh, OpenShift Ansible playbooks, but we just install the masters and the etcd because we are we use our custom playbook to all to all, all the all the nodes. And that's pretty much it. We have a few list of to do features, which are, for example, automate all the post OpenShift uh, installation, like the uh, customization of uh, HCCs or deploy the routers and such. Uh, we want to have one single button to be able to deploy one region with just a click or just a script call. And we also are working on automate the OpenSIF ecosystem, like, for example, the, the monitoring infrastructure, the, the Elasticsearch, the persistent volumes creation, and this kind of things. And that's it for my part. Thank you. That's all. All right. Well, uh, that was a lot, actually. So thank you all very much. There have been a, a number of questions in the chat room. And and I, I'm, I'm wondering myself a little bit, you've done some custom work here. And I'm wondering how much of it um, are you looking to push back into um, like OpenShift Origin, the open source project under, under the hood? Um, and is, is it possible to do that? Um, or is the custom work that you're doing with Ansible and Puppet very particular to your configuration? Uh, well, we, we are thinking about that, but at the moment we don't have any any concrete idea on that question. Okay. Well, I'll keep pushing you on that, seeing as Al, I'm doing the community management. I'd, I'd love to see some of, some of these lessons learned incorporated into the, so everybody else can use it as well. So um, one of the questions Hugo asked was, um, you're using Ansible and Puppet, and could you do these things um, that you're talking about, these customizations with just Ansible? Well, that, that's a, a, a great question. Yeah, yes, uh, I, I think that it is possible. It's my, my point of view. Uh, we are thinking about that. Uh, we, we, we probably, uh, for the, the the next generation, we will use just one of them. I don't know which one, but uh, I can say you that the Ansible is really easy to easy to use, easy to easy to learn. But uh, we we are thinking about that. Um, there is another question that just came up. Do you run separate OpenShift systems for SDLC environments, Dev, Test, Integration, Prod? No, uh, we do not run uh, open, uh, separate uh, OpenShift systems. Uh, we have a separate uh, production and non-production applications are separated in the same OpenShift instance. They do not run in the same nodes, but we have the same cluster. We deploy just one cluster per data center. Yes, and the idea is that uh, we, we use the same cluster for all the different environments, but the productions we we have a special notes only for uh, production applications. Okay, and I'm going back in the chat a little what 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 bit here um, for SSL on SDN. Are you using wildcard certs or installing one per application? We are using both. We have a default uh, wildcard. A certificate, but if the application wants to use uh, uh, its own uh, its own uh, certificate, it's also possible. Yes. And there was there are a few questions about um, uh, what are you using for your Docker registries? Are you exposing the one that comes with OpenShift, or are you standing up something external like Artifactory or Nexus? We are trying to use a core OS enterprise registry. At the moment, we. Go ahead. Okay. At the moment, you're using. Yes, uh, we, we, are, we are using an um, uh, open source uh, enterprise registry. Okay. 
but soon we will deploy the CoreOS enterprise. Very interesting how you you managed to use some of the best you know different best practices from different different off offerings. It's really um, a nice overview of everything. There's another question in here. Are you using LDAP to authenticate users into OpenShift or for users of applications hosted on OpenShift? Okay. We use LDAP for OpenShift users. Uh, what's used in each application is a responsibility of OpenShift users, which are the developers, and we have nothing to say about that. Um, let's see. Are there any other questions out there? Um, I think we've answered most of the ones that have come in. Yeah, there's one here. Um, I think you answered it in the talk. So, um, there we go. Here's a new question. How do you authorize users for OpenShift? I think that's. Well, uh, I, I don't know. I don't understand exactly the question, but we are using LDAP. Uh, we use the uh, authentic uh, authentication and authorization modules that uh, OpenShift provide. The thing is, we for users they need to be uh, they need to belong to a proper uh, LDAP group to be able to log in in OpenShift. So, if uh, any user from Probobank wants to be uh, wants to use OpenShift, they need to be added on that uh, particular group. Yes, we, we have a, a very big solution for ALM, and we share an onboarding procedure uh, for each new user. Uh, there is a onboarding uh, solution to uh, create the user in LDAP and also to add that user to a specific LDAP group for OpenShift. So um, I'll ask you guys what um, what are the new features that you're looking forward to in the next in the coming releases of OpenShift? Oh, excellent okay. question, Diane. Excellent question. Performance, 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 and performance. <laughs> um, yes, uh, we would like to do some vertical scaling. So we are waiting for version. For the next version 3.2 that uh, will reduce uh, Kubernetes version 1 to 3 yep. and the home limit uh, will be I think 110 pods per node so for us the most important feature is performance and vertical scaling the main fact is that we have a we can we could develop a big VMs with many pods in each VM, but we cannot do it not because of an infrastructure limit, but because of an OpenShift limitation. Okay. Uh, OpenShift does not support more than some quantity of pods, regardless of how big your VM is. And we and the next version is going to fix that, and that's we, what we are looking forward. All right. Well, we're all looking forward to the release party for the next one too. So that's coming soon. So, um, uh, and, and we're hoping that as it comes out the door, you'd be one of the first ones to do some testing and um, review and feedback on that as well. And I know you guys have been involved prior to the release. So thank you very much for all of your efforts on um, working with us on the OpenShift project, and also for. Um, coming here today and talking with us about um, your production multi-region deployment. I, I learned a lot and um, I really wish we could get you in front of the entire OpenStack community in Austin soon. So I'm going to see what I can do to figure out how to get you guys to Texas. Um, and hopefully we can figure out how to get get more, more OpenStackers using OpenShift as well. It's about the third production conversation I've had this week about when OpenShift on OpenStack and it's really, really brilliant to see it working um, as well as the Ceph stuff. So this is, this is great stuff. Um, and if people have questions for them, uh, you can log into the mailing list on OpenShift Commons and ask. I will try and post this recording pretty quickly and uh, I'll ask Christian to send me his slides um, so that people want to 
take notes from that. I will add those to the mailing list as well. So thanks again, everybody. Um, have a nice evening over there in Spain. And um, everybody who joined us, thank you very much. Anything to say, Diane? All right. Take care, guys. <laughs>